So welcome, thanks for coming. This is the demo theater for OpenStreetMap and ArcGIS, Mapping the Future. Uh, my name is Steve Moore. I'm a product engineer in professional services at Esri. Um, I actually work on the production mapping team, but we work on a lot of other kind of projects and initiatives, and OpenStreetMap's one of them. So um, that's what I'm gonna talk about today, kind of what it is a little bit. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, what it is and uh, what Esri's doing with it. So just a quick show of hands, how many people have used OpenStreetMap for something in the course of their work? Oh, perfect, all right. Anybody that doesn't know what OpenStreetMap is at all? Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about some background, but I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, so the definition that, I'm, that I've got up here, this is from the OpenStreetMap wiki page. This is a great resource, most of you probably know that, uh, for anything OSM related, wiki.openstreetmap.org. And they call it a free editable map of the whole world that's being built by volunteers largely from scratch and released with an open content license. So pretty self-explanatory, that's really what it is. I would say it's more of a free editable database than a map. Uh, the map is kind of the main product from it, but um, yeah, that's, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then also it's built by volunteers, but it's also maintained by volunteers. So everybody, the OpenStreetMap doesn't pay anybody. Um, so everybody that's involved with it uh, kind of on the back end is, is volunteering their time. So I think you can kind of divide it a little bit more um, granular, you know, in a higher level of, of granularity um, into two aspects. The community aspect is obviously very important as it is with any, any crowdsourced uh, project. Um, and users are kind of at the forefront of that. So that includes people who are editing new data into OpenStreetMap, um, people are consuming the data in various ways, and then developers who are obviously building applications and APIs around OpenStreetMap either to work with it or to leverage, you know, the, the data that comes out of it. So I kind of want to point out that, that graph there in the upper right, um, as of, I don't know if you can read the numbers on it, but as of about a month ago, there are just over almost four and a quarter million registered users. And when I first started using this chart, maybe three years ago, uh, you see there were half that. So in the last three years, it's, it's basically double the number of registered users, which is really impressive. I don't know specifically why, but if you look at all the metrics, they all trend up like this. Um, and then really kind of even more important than the registered users, I think, is the active contributors per year. So not only are, not only are there a lot of new users, but there's a lot of new contributors as well. So they're, they're not just joining and not doing anything, they're actually contributing to the map. So really impressive, I think. You know, it's been around since 2005 or six, and it's still growing. So there's also a lot of organizations that are, that are part of that community. Um, primarily, or, or I guess at the forefront, would be you know, nonprofits, NGOs, um, organizations that do work in developing nations. Uh, a lot of times, OpenStreetMap is, is the best data source for those parts of the world, particularly Africa. Uh, even our commercial data providers are, are lacking in, in a lot of those areas, so OSM is, is often the best option. Um, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, I just wanted to highlight, uh, they're really closely associated with OpenStreetMap, kind of in general, but they are their own entity. And uh, what they do is respond to um, international crises and, and humanitarian conflicts, things like that, and natural disasters, um, to focus mapping efforts on specific areas where there's first responders on the ground that need high quality data, like current data. Um, so they're, a, they're kind of a, a high profile you know, organization that, that's involved. Uh, and then obviously commercial companies, Esri's one of them, there's several others. Uh, a lot of times, if you're you know, looking at a, a mobile app that has a map in it, it's a smaller company, if it doesn't say Esri or Google on it, there's a real good chance it's that it's OpenStreetMap behind the scenes. So then obviously there's also a technical aspect. Um, we could argue it's just as important. Um, really at the core, like I mentioned, it's, it's a main database. There's a single Postgres database hosted on donated hardware. It's maintained by volunteers. Um, and that's really what OpenStreetMap is at its, at its base. There's a handful of client editing applications and APIs that hook into that, that either let you edit data into it, pull data out of it, do a lot of different things, and they're all kind of, you know, maintained by, by individuals, open source projects. The tiled base map is really what most people think of when they think of OpenStreetMap, and so that screenshot up there uh, is, is an example of it. It's just a raster cached base map, um, and that's really the only uh, sort of out-of-the-box product that comes out of OpenStreetMap. They don't have a lot of really any other services or anything like that. This is kind of the main thing. Uh, and I won't go into it, but that diagram there kind of gives you an idea how complex this all actually is. Um, you know, it's, it's 
pretty impressive and, and again maintained just by people volunteering their time. So what's uh, Esri doing with OSM? There's a few things that we've done for uh, quite some time now. Um, the first is we make that OpenStreetMap base map available as an option in our base map gallery in the um, ArcGIS Online Map Viewer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so you can just pick that, use it as it is. We don't host it, we're just pulling from their tile servers directly. Um, we include some OSM data in our own base map. So if you look at that screenshot, I don't know if you can read the credit note, but it says OpenStreetMap Contributor. So that changes based on where you are in the map, uh, based on what data you're looking at. So if you ever see that credit note, something in the map that you're currently looking at came from OpenStreetMap, some of the data. Uh, the ArcGIS editor for OpenStreetMap, this is um, an ArcMap only extension that lets you pull down data from OSM into a file geodatabase. There's some tools to extract it and symbolize it and things like that. Uh, and then you can also make local edits and then push them back up to OpenStreetMap if you want. And then just, you know, I mentioned I work in professional services, so obviously we do a lot of project work. So it, it comes up from time to time in, in projects either as an explicit requirement or it may just be the best option for fulfilling uh, or meeting a uh, more general requirement that a customer has. Uh, and then, you know, some prototypes as well that we've, we've worked through over the years that some see the light of day, some don't, but. So some new work that we're working on. Um, this is kind of the exciting stuff I'd, I'd like to talk about. Um, the ID editor, I didn't specifically talk about it, but it's kind of the main editing application that most people use when they're editing OpenStreetMap. <clears throat> I'm going to show that right now. So we've done some work to, ex yeah, yeah, I'm just switching over. Um, so we've done some work to uh, extend that in a couple of ways. <coughs> um, the first way, when you come in, I mean, I don't really, I won't explain how to use ID. It's very simple. Point, line, and polygon. You just draw on the map. You know, these are existing uh, OSM features. This is actually a dev environment, so this isn't live. Some of this hasn't been pulled into the, uh, the ID GitHub repository. But over here on the, on the right, under backgrounds, this is just a list of imagery base maps that you can use for reference to actually digitize the features. So uh, up until, it was only of maybe six months ago, there was no Esri option here. So we've got, it really was kind of a legal issue internally to get approval from all of our providers to do this. Uh, so it took quite a while, multiple years actually, and, um, <clears throat> but now it's an option. So depending on where you are in the world, you can switch between Bing, Digital Globe, you know, Esri, it's just another option. Sometimes it's better, sometimes, you know, another, another provider is better. Kind of the bigger, uh, or the, the more interesting thing that we've done is we extended the, the on the, the map data tab here, the ability to add a geo service layer. So basically I can, I'm gonna jump over here real quick, <clears throat> grab the URL to a map service that I have published And Wi-Fi is not working. <laughs> Let me try this one more time. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, hopefully this isn't gonna be a problem for the rest of the demo, because it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> um, so basically, I can kind of just sort of walk through what, what I would have shown you. Um, it lets you pull in features from a REST endpoint rather than manually digitizing them on the map. So in this case, I had a, few, a handful of point features. I can specify a, well, this is working. Okay, there we go. So it pulls in the sub layers that are published to that map service, all the feature layers. So I'm going to pick springs. Yeah, something's going on here, but I'll fight my way through it. Um, I can pick from this list of pre-configured OSM tags, and since everybody sounds pretty familiar, I won't, won't talk too much about what those tags are. And then I can map additional fields that are already in my data to additional OSM tags if I want to. Um, in this case, I don't. And I click load and view. And one thing I want to mention too, Data licensing, this isn't live in the, in the uh, ID editor yet, but it, it should be soon. We have a pull request that's kind of ongoing. Um, 
the licensing of the data is really important. It has to be licensed, I think, either uh, uh, public domain or one of the Creative Commons licenses. Uh, otherwise, there's a lot of issues. Like, OSM doesn't want illegal data in their database, basically. So um, there are some, some hoops you have to jump through that's uh, pretty well documented in, in our, our pull request. Um, so just wanted to make sure everybody hears that. So when I hit OK, it pulls in those features for me automatically. The tag that I pre-configured is already there. I can add additional tags if I want to, you know, name, description, whatever. And then I can kind of go through each one and either approve it or reject it. So I'm sort of in, it's in between a batch editing experience and, you know, manually going through each feature. I'll reject this one. And then kind of once I'm done, I can save that. It'll push up those two edits that I approved, reject the one that I didn't. So this is really useful if you've got, say, uh, a building footprints layer for an entire city published as a map service and you want to get it into OpenStreetMap, kind of the only way right now is, did, I mean, there's, there's some ways, but um, a lot of people would be stuck with manually digitizing each polygon. Uh, so this is just an easier way. You've already got it published. You have the data. It's an easy way to get it into OpenStreetMap. Um, and then two, I mean, batch editing is sort of uh, frowned upon, uh, or batch uploads, I should say, are frowned upon within OpenStreetMap. So we're kind of trying to strike a balance between just dumping a bunch of data in and having to go through each, each feature one at a time. So. Uh, we presented this at the OpenStreetMap conference um, in, uh, I think it was like October in Boulder, and it was actually really well, rece well received, and uh, we're still working on the pull request, like I mentioned, and hopefully it'll be, be in, the, uh, in the repository pretty soon. So another new thing, this is kind of more recent, actually, um, that um, we're, we're pretty excited about. It's still in its infancy, but um, we have a... Esri hosted complete mirror of the entire OpenStreetMap database for the entire world. Um, and we're keeping it in sync by pulling down change sets from the main OpenStreetMap database every minute. So our database is about two minutes behind the main database at any given time. So kind of the point of doing this is to sort of, you know, bring it, the OpenStreetMap capability inside the ArcGIS platform. Um, so that our user base can take advantage of it as well. I mean, I mentioned four and a quarter million OSM users, registered users. The last number I heard, ArcGIS Online has a similar number of users. So obviously there's some overlap there, but, you know, kind of being able to bring those two user bases together um, is obviously going to be mutually beneficial for, for both. So um, we think we can do some really cool stuff with this. To, to now, I mean, this is in the last you know handful of weeks that we've been doing this. Um, so up to this point, we've really only looked into like vector, vector tile base maps. So we'd be making you know one or more vector tile base maps purely from OSM data, um, and then also dynamic map services. So the vector tile stuff is is still ongoing. I mean, they're both ongoing, but the dynamic map service uh, part of it, I can kind of show you a little bit what I'm talking about. Maybe it'll yeah drive the point home. Um, so this is just a handful of layers uh, that we've got published so far. So these are individual layers that we're querying out of our mirror of the OpenStreetMap database. So everything in here is being dynamically drawn right now. So this is not cached. Um, there's no base map. It's all, it's just a terrain. Uh, so pretty cool. It actually performed surprisingly well so far. <laughs> we haven't put a lot of load on it yet, but um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the cool part about it. So to sort of maybe give you some examples of, of what you could actually do with that, uh, this is just that buildings layer. Um, I made them orange, so hopefully you can hopefully you can see them on the screen. Uh, this is in South Redland, so let's say I need to make a map of this block of houses for whatever reason. Maybe there's a, an earthquake and there's a leaking gas line in this alleyway between all the houses. I need to make a map and alert the, the residents, whatever it is. Um, you can even look at it, you know, kind of think of it, the, the, uh, the humanitarian open street map example that I gave earlier, or scenario, um, where there's first responders on the ground, they need data, and it's, it's not there. So if I zoom in, I see I got a couple buildings missing here, a couple houses. So what I can do, because this is dynamic, I can jump over. This is the real open street map editor, or the real ID editor, I should say. This is connected to live, uh, live open street map. And I'm going to select area. You're just going to have to watch me digitize a little bit. And just, it sounded like everybody was pretty familiar, but the tagging, um, I, I want to highlight that, I guess, just a little bit. Um, because OpenStreet, 
because OpenStreetMap is, is basically a flat database schema, it's points, lines, and polygons. There are no feature classes, really. There's, there's three tables. Um, there's no concept of layers, really. Everything is just defined by its tags, whatever tags have been associated with it. So if I finish drawing this polygon and I don't give it any, any kind of tagging, it's just a nameless, featureless polygon in OpenStreetMap and nobody will probably ever see it because it won't, you know, no, no query is looking for that. So the tagging is really important. I, I'm tagging this as a house. If You can just tag it as a building. Um, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about, for our use cases at least, why it's, why it's important, why we rely on that so heavily. I mean, anything an OpenStreetMap does, um, but specifically for us, we've got some, some, I think, special needs for it. So house for this as well. So I hit save and upload my edits. So I'm pushing real edits right now into OpenStreetMap. And let's make sure it goes through. Okay. So while that's kind of churning, So I just want to give you kind of an idea of what's actually happening behind the scenes. Um, so like I said, I just put a live edit into the main OpenStreetMap database up in the upper left there using a couple different tools. Uh, one's called OSM to PG SQL, one's called Osmosis. And this is what pretty much anybody in the OSM community would be using if they're doing anything like this. The main OpenStreetMap database does the same stuff. Um, probably a little bit more sophisticated, but... So using those two tools, we're pulling down change sets, you know, deltas basically from the main database every minute. We'll pull up to five minutes so we can kind of stay up to date if we fall behind. Uh, and we're ingesting them into our Postgres database. And really the key, probably difference, definitely the key difference between what we're doing and what other people have done or are doing is this is an Esri Geo database. So this isn't just a flat Postgres database. It's an Esri Geo database. So again, we're trying to, you know, kind of bring that OSM capability into the ArcGIS world. So from there, we're using query layers. And this is why the tagging is so important. I mean, again, it's not just our use case, but we're, we, because we just have points, lines, and polygons, we're trying to create layers. We have to construct these really complex query layers based on whatever the tagging structure might be. So for buildings, if I just want any building, I can just say, give me all buildings. But if I only want residential, well, then I have to query for building house, building residential, building apartment, building whatever. Um, so if you mistag it or if you misspell a tag or if you don't tag it, we won't get that data. So it's one of the challenges. You have to really sort of account for a lot of edge cases and things like that, but that's just the way it is. So once we have those layers in Pro, um, we're then publishing to Portal on ArcGIS server. So for now, it's just dynamic map services. Obviously, Vector Tiles is you know, still in development. Again, they're both in development, very much so. Um, and then once we're there, we can, you know, do anything with it effectively with any of Esri's client applications and really any other client application that can consume REST services. So let me jump back and with any luck, this failed yesterday. It wasn't my fault. Hopefully it's working now. Uh, so again, because this is dynamic, we've got a dynamic map service hooked up to our database mirror. My edit just pushed through from the main OpenStreetMap database, came down to our database. I didn't have to republish the service because it's dynamic and it just shows up. Um, you know, I can query these, I can change the symbology. I can, I mean, I don't really need to show it, but I'll kind of zoom out. You know, I can do ArcGIS online analysis. I can run GP tools on it. <clears throat> just do a quick buffer. So we'll say 100 feet. run it, it might take a little, a minute or two, but hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of what we're, what we're at least right now thinking. I mean, this is still very much in progress. Um, and and uh, so, you know, we're, we're still kind of trying to think through ways we can use this. Um, and so we're really interested in getting feedback from people. Um, what you currently do with OpenStreetMap, what you'd like to be able to do with Esri technology and OpenStreetMap, you know, challenges that you've, you've come across that uh, we can maybe help with, really anything. Um, so we set up this email uh, address for it, osmdev at esri.com, and it's not a marketing thing. We're not gonna start sending you emails trying to 
advertise things for you. It's, it's really just, we're, we're trying to gather, you know, requirements and feedback from users. So um, anything at all, criticisms, comments, whatever, um, we're, we're interested to hear it. So um, please feel free. Um, I don't think there's anybody in here after us, so I got plenty of time for questions. I'll stick around, and um, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah, so the question was from the Esri mirror that I talked about, can you export data? Um, yeah, in theory, you, I mean, yes, you could right now. Um, that's not, you know, the, the, the services and the items aren't public yet, so nobody, nobody could. Um, in theory, yes, I don't know how that would perform. We haven't tried it. Um, there are definitely performance challenges with this much data and there's latency, but we're hosting the, the database in Amazon, so there's, there's a lot of things to kind of, yeah, consider, but, um, you know, that's possibly something that we would be considering, yeah. Right, yeah, just, yeah, I mean, I think that would be, definitely a, a common use case people would want, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, not for me, sorry, map services. So, the map service I showed is it's a one way it's a one way uh, you know path. Uh, sorry, I really can't hear you. Uh, no, I mean it's just a an ArcGIS server map service, dynamic map service. So we don't have like a WMS endpoint or anything like that. But um, so yeah, no, haven't haven't considered that yet. But there's theoretically no reason why we couldn't. Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it would, it would make it available to, yeah, even, you know, more, more client applications for sure. Any other questions? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, the question is how, how to kind of get involved with volunteering with OpenStreetMap or, or anything. Um, you can just go to OpenStreetMap.org and sign up. You can start editing data in your, your local neighborhood. Um, the, the, I, I actually, I do a, a, a fair amount of work um, with the humanitarian OpenStreetMap projects. If you go there, it's just kind of like a list of projects that they need help with. And some of them are, you know, more geared towards advanced users that are kind of more familiar with editing, editing data and, and things like that. But a lot of it's just like, you know, we just need roads in this village in the Philippines or whatever it is. You know, we just need roads, a road network to, to, for the, the local community. So, um, so that's, that's a, I think, a pretty good way to, to do it as well. And then, like I said, the, the OpenStreetMap wiki page is a really good source uh, for information for that kind of thing. Sometimes it's out of date, so you have to sort of take it with a grain of salt, but... That's a, the best resource, really. Yep. Uh, I have a hard time hearing you. Yeah. Oh, um, no. Yeah, so the question was, do we have any plans to work with uh, Jossum, which is another editing application that's kind of used more for advanced editing workflows? Um, no, we haven't. It's just uh, that, that small amount of work we've done with ID. Yeah, so it is, he, he was saying that the performance is, is better with, with Jossum, and it is. It's, um, I, I've seen stats, and I think it's something like 95 or 98 percent of people that, of, of edits, or, or no, sorry, 95 or 98 percent of the people editing OpenStreetMap use ID. It's by far the most popular editor, but way more edits have been put in using Jossum. So most people, uh, ID is the way to go, and so that's you know kind of what we've we've focused on so far. But um, yeah, I think you know Jossum definitely has a uh, very specific place, you know. Um, but yeah, no no plans to do anything with that. Yep. Um, yeah, the question was, can you create an offline TPK using OSM to PG SQL and, and kind of what I showed. 
OSM to PG SQL literally takes a planet file or a diff, uh, yeah, like a diff XML and applies it to a Postgres database. That's as far as I've ever used it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's all you can do with it. Uh, Osmosis just pulls down the change sets and then parses them into something that OSM to PG SQL can read. Um, so I think it's a pretty specific use case from our REST endpoint. Um, you know, probably theoretically possible, not something we've tried yet, uh, but you know, could be one of those use cases that I talked about, you know, um, earlier. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, do we have? Uh, yeah. So we do. Um, we have. It's called the uh, Arc. The, uh, let me get the name right. ArcGIS editor for OpenStreetMap. Or. Is it OpenStreetMap editor? It's ArcGIS, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, so it's a free desktop uh, ArcMap only extension, and you can do that. You can define a bounding box, pull down data into a geodatabase, and then either keep it there, you can symbolize it, you can edit it, and then push those edits back if you want to. Right. Oh, can you get the change set into a geodatabase? question. I was expecting somebody to ask it. Um, so he's asking if there's any plans to migrate the op our OpenStreetMap editor to Pro. Um, we've looked into it. It's kind of a huge amount of work and we're not sure basically is the answer. Um, we might, we might not. We're, you know, our, our development efforts are, are more towards what I just showed, you know, kind of web-based things. Um, there's still a user community that uses that quite a bit, so uh, it's, yeah, remains to be seen. Um, it may be, you know, some replacement. It may not be the exact same thing. It may be one of these, you know, sort of web-based technologies that you might be able to use in Pro. Um, yeah, we just don't know yet. Is uh, StreetMap Premium, is it in OpenStreetMap or? No, uh, it, so that's a commercial licensed uh, data source that you, know, you have to pay to use. Um, so anybody, if anybody was putting StreetMap Premium data into OpenStreetMap, they'd be violating all kinds of license agreements. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it, it's, it's definitely separate. But they do have, I, I don't know if I, I guess I didn't really talk about it, but um, the data license for OpenStreetMap is completely open. So you can download all the data and you can put it up for sale on your website if you wanted to. It's completely within the limits of the, of the license. So yeah, there's, there's usage restrictions and that's actually another reason why we kind of went this route of hosting our own database is because there's fairly tight usage restrictions on the servers that serve out, um, you know, there, there's, there's the main OpenStreetMap ones and then there's some other independently operated ones that people have for like, you know, small projects that they're working on. And they all have pretty tight restrictions because, you know, it's, it's they have to throttle capacity, so. Yeah. Why we're, why we have the database, like why we're cloning the database? Um, because once we, in our database, it's an Esri Geo database. So then we can publish services from it. We can work with it in Pro natively. Um, the, 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 you know, the OpenStreetMap uh, database itself isn't accessible. Like you can't connect to the, the Postgres database and work with the data really. You can extract data from it. Um, you can download, 
you know, regional extracts of data if you want and work with those. Those are out of sync, you know, they don't get updated. So it's really just, I mean, part of it is ease of use for stuff that we're doing, and then part of it is just to, you know, bring it into the Esri platform, basically. Nothing that I'm aware of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that, and that's sort of the, the only sort of public-facing product that I'm, you know, again, maybe I'm wrong, but the only public-facing thing is, is the base map, the tiled base map. Um, so, you know, there is obviously all that data behind it, and you can query it and extract out from it using a handful of different APIs and things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to my knowledge, there isn't, like, a way you can just connect to it and pull, pull whatever you want out of it, so... Anybody else? Thanks. Thank you.